I was multitasking, so I didn't record the countdown. I'm still watching it live. I still got ad breaks. Take my word for it. She'll be right there in your face. Y'all don't want to believe it. Uh-huh. Just act like it don't happen. Oh, she may know that. What's her name? Shimonia, Shimonia, Shimonia. Y'all know what I'm talking about. What's good, Kaiju number eight fans? It's your main man, Master Cell. Leader of the Master Knights of the Roundest Table of the Company One. Subscribe to this video. And we're here with that, mm hmm, Kaiju number eight. If any of you missed my update video from two days ago, long story short, I'm gonna do videos when I can. Right now, I can. Here we are. Now, with this episode, pretty much we can start off right where we was last week, as we typically do. Kafka stands up. Pretty much trying to play off his injuries to do whatever he has to do to try to show Hoshina that he does not need that shield and not to take him out of his air. Trying to pose and stuff, trying to hold it in place. Something I think wrestlers do all the time. Gotta pretend that you're not hurt. <laughs> but it was indeed enough for Hoshina he allowed Kafka to continue. And while Kafka tried to tell Ishikawa that he understood the deal that he made earlier in the exam, Ishikawa just says to hell all that and be like he's gonna back him up. Or stand him up because Ishikawa perceives to be his legs. Holding Kafka on his shoulders as he, as he starts to run. Apparently real fast according to Kafka. It's just brotherly combining. You know, good and logging. We've seen this before. Perhaps I shouldn't have made that wrestling reference though because he could easily hit over the electric chair and just fall back and break <laughs> the rest of Kafka's neck. And actually, unsurprising thinking about it, Hoshina finds this hilarious. And I'm not sure what the exact criteria, what everybody's being graded on right now. I'm sure we're going to figure it out next week. But apparently, this is enough for Hoshina to believe these two need to be passed. <laughs> and approval from the higher ups is a good thing at the end of the day. Some people call it dick riding. It's typically from people who don't have it though. The bosses like me and they don't like you. At the end of the day, that's your problem. Now, in the meantime, all this, Hino Mina is doing her thing. So much so that even people are also examining these right now, looking at her going in on these other kaiju right now to the point where she, they're like, we're not even getting a chance to help her. And I hope I don't shoot myself in the foot by saying this, because obviously, even pointed out by Mina and Hoshina, she's obviously a grade A candidate for joining the Defense Force. This on her skills and expertise alone, and yes, she is the daughter of the Defense Chief. And obviously a main character in the story, so yeah, her passing is pretty much done deal. However, I would not mind if they give her the critique as in trying to do everything yourself out here is a fatal flaw. Despite Mina being the head and pretty much being plastered on billboards all over the place, the Defense Force is a team. It's a team effort. And one of my big highlights that I gave Shimomiya last week was the fact that she, how she was able to help out Kafka in that moment that she did and pretty much try to handle things at the same time, but going in to help other people. So this would be a straight up contrast to that. It's not, it's not everything so black and white. It's also like, just because you help other people out, you also have to be willing to be helped at the same time. A flaw I think a lot of us have, or rather the other way around, either or. We have times where we actually just want to be a help to people, but never can, and as a result of that, we feel like we need to be carried. And on the contrast of that, we have times where we think we're doing too much, or actually trying to help people out too much, and not able to ever, ever receive a helping hand, whether you realize these things or not. And the latter in this case being Shimomiya. Cause yes, as impressive as it is, she does indeed take out all the kaiju. The kanju, the hoju, the joju, they got names for these things. Got interrupted, my bad. But yes, as I was saying, Shimomiya pretty much takes out all the other kaiju. And long story short, with that, the exam is over. However, plot. Well, first and foremost, yes, indeed, uh, Kafka and <laughs> Ichikawa's brother combined abruptly ends because now the exam's over, they don't need to actually team up anymore. And Hoshida and Mina has their comments. However, we also start to get signs of Shimonia's, I guess, daddy complex, daddy issues type shit. It comes in many forms. As some of you already know, life is not exactly a fan of me doing videos that keep trying to interrupt me. Lose my train of thought again, let's just do this. Another kaiju shows up. And he shows up damn near looking like Yoshimitsu from Tekken 3. <laughs> However, this kaiju is not only different from your traditional kaiju, but most of his features and things actually is comparable to the kaiju form of our boy Kafka. Yes, I know how this episode ended. I'm talking about first impressions right now. He comes in there like, look bitch, I'm Rick James. But it seems like he walks in there, you know, pretty much he's the same height as normal humans type-ish and he's intelligent enough to speak, as in speaking to kaiju. However, he's speaking in, well not either Japanese, or whatever tongue of the dub that you're gonna get. Basically, basically Shimomiya understands him as well. And I guess he has this power to revive kaiju, or rather the hoju that he revived has the power to revive kaiju. I, it, it wasn't necessarily specified, but after sending a quick bullet through the heart of Shimomiya, <laughs> aim straight for the right titty, left titty. Where's your heart again? I'm glad I don't get shot. Anyways, yes, all the other kaiju come back to come back to life and problems. Because since the exam was already over, everything had pretty much got turned off. So HQ, as we're calling it right now, pretty much can't necessarily tell what's going on. All they do is see that the vitals, Shimonia's vitals, vitals are getting messed up, 
and oh, evidently things is going down and danger levels is rising and bruh i guess the long story short on that one will be that mina and shima you know mina and hoshina these will go down there themselves and figure it out despite running fast as hell down there with their gas masks and stuff on obviously moving very quickly they take forever to do so was there not like a helicopter or something you guys could have jumped down from and jump on like, like what how far away from the test site were y'all especially moving on feet i expect better now back at the testing site she and mia stands against this uh well i guess other kaiju however despite her still trying to strive for perfection and still be the best and actually her real goal here is to make sure nobody gets taken down or dies almost like the new age Bakugo Baku for my hero when he was doing the exams in season five or was it six? I don't remember. For my hero fans, what I'm talking about is when Bakugo was going against the other class, but his main goal was making sure nobody in his team got captured and pretty much clean sweeps the other class. I got a similar vibes here with Shimomiya. Which leads back to the mentality I was saying earlier, and her strive to be able to protect everybody and be there for everybody, she has closed off a chance for anybody to be there for her. So much so, which she gets her limbs immediately shot at. Oh, by the way, there is actually some um, areas where it comes to Shimomiya that don't give me any spoilers, but... I'm starting to question, because you know, yes, they have these suits, right? And these suits is, is protected them clearly. And with these suits, as I pointed it out, just gonna say it again, has a place to put your titties. Actual chest plates and whatnot. It's easy to believe that the suits are good enough to try to survive these type of attacks and protect these attacks as in her heart getting destroyed when they got shot through earlier. But the way she put it was kind of weird. Almost like, she, well, I guess I just come right out and say it. Like she kind of infused somehow with Fakaji her damn self. It's one of those things where it's like I either have to learn more about the suits or there's something else there. But I, if, if, if it takes a spoiler to explain that to me, then let's leave it alone. But yes, this rogue kaiju, Yoshimitsu, does shoot all cap, not cap, excuse me, Shimomiya's limbs and she falls down again. Pretty much thinking that he's done with this. At this point, he leaves and the uh, revived Hoju kaiju is going to handle the rest. As life flashes before your eyes, before death, Shimomiya starts to recollect moments of her past where she was at the top of her school, her class when she was a young child and her, one of her friends was very much impressed by her. Very much liking being praised at the time, as most young children are. She, you know, big-headed about it. However, that little girl that's her friend pretty much goes to her parents, and her parents kind of share on and praise her for her well do doings here, as Shimomiya realizes that she's the only one without this treatment and kind of stands in the middle alone. To the point where she's then appointed by the butler that we've seen earlier in the show take Kafka's parking spot, and he brings her home saying that their daddy is here, but... He does not give a shit. Pretty much, she's the top of the school, of course she is, and you can't really recollect or try to, <laughs> I guess, embrace this W. No point in celebrating it, because you're already supposed to be on your next goal. Hate to kind of go here, but I guess, I guess it's kind of like, why get rewarded for things you're supposed to do? At least in the eye of a parent, right? But the cold shoulder that Shimomiya's dad is giving her right now does kind of give me vibes of Shizuru from Zon 100, for people who've watched that. This kind of parent already decided what their daughter needs to do and how they need to strive for that same greatness and what they just need to achieve. And pretty much, while this wasn't said, anything around that goal or outside that goal is needless. He must always strive for that perfection, i.e. better than everybody else. A lot of this stuff wasn't actually said, but not hard to read between the lines. And while Shimomiya does use that because she wants to be perfect for her daddy, it doesn't exactly help her getting swatted real quick by this Hoju Kaiju into the freaking wall. And even then, you gotta at least give Shimomiya her props, cause even after getting swatted around, shot at plenty of times, and getting destroyed like this, she still keeps going if she can. However, even with Kaiju personalities, tendencies, a good ass suit, blah blah blah, and all the training in the world from the top flight people in this defense force, human limitations starts to creep up. As in a bro arm that is broken as hell, your limbs start to fuck up. Adrenaline, even in the heat of the moment, does eventually fade out. And long story short, Shimonia is down bad on her knees right now as this Hoju Kaiju is powering up his next attack. With tears falling from her eyes now, she thinks this is over and is unable to be perfect for her dad. It may be worth to point out though, at this moment, pretty much everybody has been evacuated, so... I mean, her end goal was to save everybody, she did. Besides, obviously, two people, more specifically one. At this point, I have to call out again this cliche that this show keeps freaking doing. Like at this point, the number of times this happened is pretty much defined by the number of episodes we have. Because for the fourth time, there's a moment where a kaiju is going to do this one big thing to take out or kill somebody. And this person thinks it's over. We have this long dragged out scene before somebody immediately comes in and right in there and save them. 
Not only is this a cliche that's done too many times in anime in general, why do it so freaking much in one show? Like at this point, Kaiju number 8 does better ways. I'll at least say this is executed a little differently, because instead of somebody all of a sudden coming out of nowhere to move somebody out the way or block an attack, you at least have Kafka st standing in front of Shimomiya telling her how amazing that she did the job she did right as the blast is coming. Which is at the end of the day kind of okay anyways, because I mean who else you expect to save Shimomiya here? And then nothing else, I was actually kind of wrong with my predictions last week because I kind of predicted that at the end of the day, Kafka would have needed to use some of his kaiju power just to keep going and pass his exam. Not what happened. A reminder that the exam is freaking over right now. So as far as I guess Kafka's mind is concerned, it's free game. He straight up turns into a kaiju from Shimomiya, blocks the other kaiju, the Hoji kaiju, and is ready to go in. Powering up that electric ability that he has, making him one of the strongest kaiju of all time from 42 to 9.8 apparently. About to hit this dude, big ass Hoju with this one punch and get it done. Not before he pleads with Shimomiya profusely not to tell nobody. <laughs> Getting on his knees and bowing multiple times. <laughs> But yes, another one punch kaiju, he punches this hoju and takes it out. Going back to Shimomiya revealing his face as the kaiju mask fades from the side. Indeed, yes, this is what you see is real bitch. This is where Ishikawa comes in and pretty much <laughs> berates <laughs> Kalka for using his kaiju abilities here. Especially in front of somebody when this is supposed to be a secret. You can kind of argue who messes up the secret more here though. Is it Kafka for revealing himself in front of somebody to save them? Or is it Ishikawa revealing in front of that same person that he knew about this this entire time? Like if Shimomiya did is decide to snitch on you guys right now, both of y'all would go down. <laughs> Ishikawa, you gotta play that a little bit better. Shimomiya passes out, and we out. At a moment of deja vu, we have another moment where Mina and Hoshina, late, came to the scene. But to see that this big kaiju that was causing these problems is destroyed the same type of way last time we had a big kaiju get taken out before they got there without any recollect or any shrimpness of what actually happened. When the mentality of fool me once, shame on you, mentality twice, fool me twice, shame on me, fool me three times, I mean at this point you guys are only gonna get so many strikes. Especially with Hoshin are already under the impression that nobody in here that did was the examiners with the weapons that they had, even with the skills that they had, could take out this kaiju in this type of way. But with confirmation that Shimonita was indeed evacuated out of there by Ichikawa and Kafla, me and Hoshin pretty much wrapped things up there. Kefra's back in the hospital, he's kind of pissed out that Shimonita's getting more treatment than he is. You could say that Shimonita is the Defense Force daughter, obviously she has a higher up thing, more money, blah blah blah. Yeah. Better reasons to have more accommodation than Kefra, but Ishikawa's reason kind of shines through here even more. She's getting better treatment than you. Yeah, cause she was more fucked up, count your blessings nigga. Now as they had their conversation about what's going on in the hospital, whole time Mina is outside the door. Lucky for them they didn't actually talk about Kafka being a kaiju for her to eavesdrop. Now Mina eventually comes in there. <laughs> and the reason I find this kind of funny, cause you know like Mina so far has had this d demeanor about her. What we know about her, she's kind of stone faced, don't really show many expressions. She's pretty, she's kind of not, not exactly crude or rude, but she doesn't exactly, you know, put emphasis on a whole lot of things. She kind of stays stoic the entire time. She wears white panties, has a freaking pet tiger, a white tiger. But because she does have a past for Kafka, who is Kafka, who's kind of back into the game, and obviously the fate encounter between these two just, kind of just happened, but nothing happened. But when she says her thing to Kafka, <laughs> Kind of like, we heard his view protected Shimomiya. Appreciate that. And she just walks out. Kafka doesn't say anything to her because he, he wants to talk to her as a soldier. I could say a thing that Mina is the same, but you know when it comes to even your stoic personality, you kind of have the same feelings this entire time. We've seen Kafka <laughs> always be like, what he's going to say to her? What he's gonna, how, how is he going to go about talking to her? What's going to happen when we actually have to sit down and have this discussion? Imagine Mina doing the same thing, <laughs> sitting outside that wall the entire time. Like, how am I about to go about this? talking to this man after all this time. Because <laughs> even with her personality aside, the way she went in there just said two lines and just looked at him real quick and just immediately left. It's just like, you know, he was nervous as hell. <laughs> Sitting out there, standing outside that room the entire time, we're trying to figure out what the freaking say. <laughs> just to end up choosing to do the bare minimum, which you're supposed to do and walk out. Girl, you ain't fooling nobody. Like at this point, I'm pretty much looking forward to honestly to see how much you can keep that up. <laughs> we're gonna get her to crack eventually. Shit, crack some legs open. Let's not go that far. And Hoshina is checking up on Shimomiya, pretty much gave her the report about what happened because, and she has this delusion that apparently she did that's her dad. Yeah, that's definitely something we got to unpackage more on, huh? I just realized I'm doing this video in like three parts now because of interru interruptions. How long is this video right now? My bad, y'all. Talking too much. And Hoshina gives her the report, but she looks confused. So Hoshina is asking her, wait, is that not what happened? Shimomiya is not exactly sure about... <laughs> 
how to go about saying about what happened and being told to keep it a secret, she pretty much just like, I killed the kaiju. Now this is a power play on Hoshina's move here, obviously. Cause we already know situation already tells us that Hoshina knows that nobody out there killed that kaiju. At least not by the means of the, that they was given going into this exam. Hoshina coming in with this status report is the only thing that they could write up in the first place, but he already knows this is a lie. Telling this lie to Shimomiya, seeing her get caught off guard by this, he knows it's, now knows that it's BS as well. That's just confirmation. Knowing goddamn well that Shimomiya is saying that trying to just take all the credit for here, saying that she killed the kaiju, is a lie. Not even in the sense of trying to take all the credit, more so that she's trying to cover something up. Because even if he wasn't Hoshina having all this background information, you can obviously tell how reluctant she was to even say that. There may be a lot of things to unpack with our characters, but the mysteries here that's slowly becoming unraveled is a good bit of the meat and potatoes of this show. But that being said, the freaking kaiju that started all this crap is in the freaking bathroom. That was weird, man. <laughs> this guy is on the phone, at least trying to figure out how to use his phone. <laughs> Apparently he's like one of the members of the cleaning crew that Kafka and Ishikawa was in. Did I miss something or not paying much enough attention? Who was this? At the same freaking time, they're kind of trying to hide his face with the shadow. Like, are we supposed to not know who this guy is? Or am I supposed to look back at other episodes and put the pieces together? What is happening? So this ain't some Attack on Titan type shit right now. I guess that makes the villains other people that's been turned into kaijus. So, I need to find that basement. I know Attack on Titan has been over this entire time. I even know what's in the basement. I just haven't finished the show. I didn't finish it. And one day I, was, I said I was going to go back to read the manga because I got up to the manga. And said, this ain't about Attack on Titan. It shows about Kaiju fucking things up. You know, all these considered, this is probably the best episode we got yet. Playing the story beast has been going here. Maybe the plot lines are starting to roll. And yeah, everything that's happening right now, the, like I said, the unpackaging you know, or the unraveling of all this is rather intriguing. With the results of the exams seemingly on the way next week, we close off this first section of this book. Let's see where it goes. If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me and I'll see y'all. If you're not subscribed to this movie, mm-hmm.